Um, hi everyone, this is uh, Father Kevin saying hello and reaching out to all of you, saying I miss you, I pray for you, and I care and am deeply concerned about your well-being. So I will continue to hold you in prayer. Um, I would ask some of you, please, um, some of you have called and asked how you can help or what you can do. I think spiritually uh, we can do a lot. We may not be able to do much physically, but spiritually we can do a lot. And so I'm going to specifically ask you, if you're seeing this, to take some time in prayer for those who are dying. So many people will be facing the end of their life through this disease, through this sickness, and many of them will not be prepared. And so I think if we can say some prayers for the dying, um, that would be of great comfort and great help. And uh, those of you who pray the rosary, I'm gonna ask you to pray, the ro pray a complete rosary for those who are dying, for their comfort and for their passage into eternal life because um, I believe that spiritually we can do a lot for these folks. So please, uh, over the next few days, take some time to offer that kind of a prayer. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Triduum, with the three days, the great three days, the days around which the church calendar is um, uh, built. Uh, these three days are coming up very quickly. We can't spend them together. So I thought I'd uh, kind of talk you a little way through them so that you have a sense of what's going on in these great liturgies. I'll be doing those liturgies, remind you that they have to be done and live streamed. They can't be recorded. Uh, so I invite you to participate in them on, uh, on Thursday at 7 and Friday at 7 and then on Saturday evening at 8 o'clock. So again, those are all three evening times, but that's the way we're going to celebrate the, the Lord's Passover, the Lord's Passion. So what, what I'd like you to think about now is that this event, this is one event in which we celebrate different uh, experiences or moments, uh, but one event that celebrates the great Passover of our Lord Jesus Christ from, from the darkness of sin and death and suffering to the glory of his resurrection in God's presence. So three days that kind of take us through that transition. Um, we're not supposed to, meant, we're not meant to be caught up in any particular historical moment. We're not going to be there when he has the Last Supper. We're not going to be there when he's doing his agony in the garden. We're not going to be there at his cross. But what we do is we walk through these mysteries so that we can connect spiritually with the work that <clears throat> Jesus is accomplishing for our salvation. It's important to realize that everything from our church year, our everything in our spiritual life is rooted in in this great uh, passion Passover mystery. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Um, one probably the most significant thing uh, that is at the root of this and deeply connected to this is the Jewish celebration of the Feast of Passover. So uh, one of the things that you can do to kind of prepare for this is to understand how Jesus' Passover is a um, is a, an echo of and a re-articulation of the great theme that God saves his people, God rescues his people. The, the, this great rescue of God is most poignantly depicted in um, Israel or the Hebrews leaving the land of Egypt and entering into the promised land. That Passover that takes place in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, can be read about in Exodus 12, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. So you might want to read that sometime in the coming week as we prepare for these great mysteries. The uh, Passover that the Jews, our brothers and sisters, celebrate uh, to commemorate the liberation that God had won for them from the hands of the Egyptians and their slavery there. There is a memorial meal attached to that, and that memorial meal is to be in, eaten in a specific way in remembrance of what the Lord has done for them. 
So when we come to our Passover of Jesus, his Passover from death to life, we're talking about um, kind of participating in this same great mystery of God's salvation. So our, our Passover cel uh, celebration begins on Thursday evening with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And the Mass of the Lord's Supper commemorates the institution of the Eucharist, the, the gift of Christ's body and blood to his church to commemorate uh, uh, his presence and his memory and the constant offer of God's salvation to us. So at the heart of this uh, celebration on Thursday night is the uh, Paschal celebration of the Mass, the, uh, the celebration of uh, the, uh, remembering the Lord's Supper on the last night before he died. We know from Matthew, Mark, and Luke that this was a Passover supper, so it's very tied in with the Old Testament. And we're celebrating it to remember uh, our own uh, uh, movement from slavery to freedom, uh, from death to life. And so this gift then given to the church becomes our Eucharistic celebration um, throughout all time. And we enter once again the mystery of God's love for us in this sharing, in this meal celebration. In the midst of this, we have the foot washing ceremony, which is only done on Holy Thursday every year. And the foot washing is supposed to help us understand what it was that Jesus really did in terms of emptying, emptying himself and embracing the role of a slave so that he might uh, release us from the pain of our own sin and death. So the foot washing happens that night right after the gospel. Um, we move into Friday, and Friday is called the celebration of the Lord's Passion. And so we, the, the centerpiece of this celebration is the cross and the passion narrative according to John. So we're going to focus on Friday with um, the idea that we're entering into the Lord's uh, gift of himself and his choosing to take upon himself this role so as to win for us salvation. At this point in the liturgy, there's no mention of resurrection because we're supposed to understand the gift of Jesus' life, the glory that he revealed by entering into suffering and death. Um, God's glory will be revealed on Saturday night and Sunday. The Father's glory will be revealed in the resurrection. But here Jesus is revealing the Father's love for us in the gift of himself on the cross. So we venerate the cross. We honor the cross. We recognize the cross as the instrument of our salvation and the instrument of God's glory. And that Jesus embraces it through his passion and that we are privileged to share in that the outcome of that great movement of salvation. The liturgy on Friday is three parts. Uh, you have basically the passion and the readings leading up to it. You have the veneration of the cross, uh, where the assembly is invited to come forward and to honor the cross. <clears throat> and then the distribution of Holy Communion. It is not a mass. It is, um, uh, it is a celebration of the Lord's passion, essentially. Uh, and we're, it's kind of wedged in between two great masses, the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Thursday and the great Mass of the Resurrection on, at, at the Easter Vigil. So Friday is that in-between day. So is Saturday morning. As Saturday, we're supposed to wait until dark again to celebrate the light of Christ born into the world. So the Saturday night Mass is called Easter Vigil, but it is Easter. We're celebrating Easter. It has four components to it. Um, one is the liturgy, of the, uh, the liturgy surrounding the fire and the candle. The second is the liturgy of the word. <clears throat> the third is the liturgy of baptism. And we have nobody back being baptized, but that's an essential part because that's the symbol. And then the fourth part is the liturgy of the Eucharist, the celebration again of the Lord's Passover Supper. So those four parts, um, they're going to be a, a much shorter this year because of the circumstances. 
but that you understand that all of these add to uh, the intensity of this experience and kind of highlight what its meaning is. So on Sunday, as we pass from darkness to light, or as, on Saturday evening, as we pass from darkness to light, You'll see that symbolized so beautifully in the celebration of the liturgy. We light a new fire at night to indicate that we're moving toward light. We're moving toward day. We're moving toward resurrection. So uh, that's an essential piece of it, the, the liturgy of the fire and the candle, which symbols the, the light in the darkness, the light that has overcome the darkness, and the Easter candle, a reminder of Christ's resurrection. The liturgy of the word then traces the history of salvation from the, the from the dawn of the of the first uh, event of creation, the the spirit of God bringing forth the world, all the way through the whole passion, uh, not passion, but the the um, the the scriptural mysteries of the Old Testament, God's revelation to His people, leading us all the way up to uh, the letter to the Ephesians. Uh, by, no, in the letter to the Romans by St. Paul. And in Romans chapter 6, he tells us how Christ has brought us by his resurrection into light and through baptism, we're able to share in that as well. And then the gospel, of course, the gospel proclamation of the resurrection of Jesus according to Matthew this year. Uh, and then Baptism takes place because it is the symbol par excellence of this passage from death to life. Um, so the baptism of adults, this is the only time of the year that it is ritually and openly celebrated with the whole community. And so um, those who have been preparing for baptism would uh, enter into the waters of baptism, the blessing of the water, the sprinkling of water on all the baptized, the... Uh, uh, baptismal promises that we make, the lighting, relighting of our baptismal candles, and then uh, kind of a symbolic passage from the water, the waters of death, to being pulled forth into new life, the, the new life that Christ has won for us. And then uh, after the liturgy of baptism, the liturgy of the Eucharist takes on a special flavor because it is now directed toward the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation for all his people and the paschal banquet of heaven, which never ends. So that's the, the movement of this three days. Easter Sunday celebrates the resurrection, of course, but the highlight of our year really is this passage from Thursday to Saturday night and the, the celebration of the the uh, mystery of Christ rising from the dead. So there's a little introduction to what's coming up uh, for this coming week. And uh, hopefully you will be a part of it as much as you can be. And uh, that you'll take the time to kind of um, think about and reflect upon the Lord's uh, gift of new life to us through his resurrection from the dead. So please join me. I have a little statue here of St. Columba that somebody sent me to remind us that we are all gathered in his name. He is with us and praying for us as well. And so we're grateful to God for all the, the gift of all of his saints who continue to participate with us in the unfolding of these mysteries. So have a good day. Hope you enjoy this. Bye.